Hello everybody, Sifter again with another inscription video and today I will be doing a tier list on the game. So as you see, first of all, the tiers are not the classic ABC tiers because a bunch of cards have different, um, I guess, abilities and stuff. So <laughs> I decided to do it like this. I will also do a sigil tier list at some point, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. I will think about it. Either way, this is the tier list. Ouroboros, I mean, we know what this is. Carry is a card that uh, literally on its own might actually give you a win. A very strong are cards that are very strong, you know, powerful decks to have, uh, cards to have in your deck. Uh, useful cards are, you know, useful cards. Cards that are decent, uh, not complete trash, uh, not to carry potential, but, you know, cards that do something. It could have been a bullfrog, uh, is literally what it says. It's a card that's basically almost trash, in between trash and existing. Uh, so it almost could have been a bullfrog. Uh, then uh, there is to the flames. By the way, I'm using the bullfrog as a reference because all the runs start with the bullfrog, as far as I know. Uh, I mean, if you use the drafting mod I use, they don't, but normally they do. So bullfrog is a good measure of uh, as a unit, you know, as a unit of measure, bullfrog is a good one, in my opinion, because you always have one in the deck. To the flames is a special category for uh, units that are meant to be thrown in the flames. Uh, that's why it's above trash and below. It could have been a bullfrog. Trash, uh, trash, but has one good deck. Uh, one deck it's good in is for some very specific units. Uh, then the rest is trash. And then not really a card is for also some cards that aren't cards that uh, like the, the pelts. So, uh, before I begin, I want to make clear that um, when I send something to trash, I don't mean that the sigil itself is trash. I mean that the card in your deck sitting there and existing is going to be trash. And obviously you can say, oh, but this card, if you put flame on it, it's good. Yeah, anything is good if you put flame on it. You know, even the trashiest of trash, if you put like two or three flame on something that costs one, then it's becoming instantly very strong. So putting flame on it is not an argument. And uh, the whole idea here is if you want to have the card in your deck, okay? I'm pointing it right, right away because I'm pretty sure a bunch of people are going to disagree with them. I'm going to place out here. But once again, the idea is if it's in your deck and you draw it, is it a good card to have in the fight or not? That's the idea of trash and the rest too. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to use uh, a lot of cards that are going to be in the trash place are going to have good, uh, gonna have good sigils. I will do a sigil video on another day so this is mostly going to be about them actually as i said being in your deck so uh, i think we can begin let's also make it like uh, basically perfect here yeah. i think everything's aligned i mean tier maker is a bit out of, out of scope but who cares let's uh let's begin i mean here is the to the flames the first card that's for the flames is the adder uh, when I say to the flames, it means that you throw the adder in the flames and it, uh, it gives you infinite flames. And uh, even if the flames don't consume him, then you either will get a 1-9 adder or a 5-1 adder, which both is decent. So, I mean, you just try to burn it. If it burns, it burns. Now, uh, the first card here we find that's not a to the flames card is going to be a trash card. <laughs> Uh, now you might say, yo, Sif, no, the sigil is good. I was saying the sigil is not important uh, for uh, this thing. The idea is if this card is in your deck, is it good? And I believe Alpha is not because it's a five bones cost, which is a bit too much. And it just brings a one, two on the table. Uh, I mean, the sigil itself is good. But um, yeah, I mean, at five cost, you should pretty much already be winning the match. I mean, if you have Bone Lord buffs, then maybe you can put it out early. But at that point, I mean, there are better stuff with five bones. And uh, I don't believe this card's good. Uh, maybe you could say, uh, maybe it could have been a bullfrog, but it costs five. It costs a bit too much. If it's in your starting hand alongside some other stuff and you're not a bone build, you're pretty much toast. Amalgam is a useful card. I mean, it's a very strong card, not a useful card, because it's a two cost three three, which is already decent stats. And um, it uh, actually gets every single sigil for every single totem you build. So if you build any totem whatsoever, it gets a passive. So it's a 2-2 two, two with a, a 2 cost 3-3 three, three with a passive, if you have a totem, which you should. And uh, then you can also put another sigil on it. So, I mean, normally you can put a sigil on it and then with the totem it can have two. So it should be. It should be useful. I mean, if you compare it to the wolf, which is going to be a useful one, it's just straight up better. It's all the elements, by the way, for anybody that doesn't know, it's all the types. Creatures, that's the idea. Uh, amoeba. Amoeba, I would say, is useful. Um, it's a 2 cost, 1-2, which is decent. 
stat wise and it can set sigil at random sometimes the sigil is trash sometimes the sigil is good so overall it's good if, if you're gonna consider other units that are gonna be useful later you will see uh, i will uh, rearrange them at the very end and decide if i'm wrong about something so stick to the end i guess uh now uh, the ant worker is definitely trash, but has one deck it's good at and uh, good in, and that would be the ant deck. Now that's it pretty much, so uh, we're gonna continue onwards. I mean, literally, the, the unit does not work out of the deck. So, but in the deck it's good. Ant queen is actually useful, because it itself brings you an ant, and with only two, with one card, you get one uh, unit that's a uh, two cost, uh two three if you play the other end and then you get also a uh, one cost two two so this itself is really good you need to have some sacrifice outlets to do it but otherwise it's really good as far as i know i'm not 100 sure about this but if you place uh, give a sigil to the ant queen the sigil gets also transferred to the created ant i'm not 100 sure about that but uh, if that's the case then it's, uh, it's it's even better than i thought so i mean it's it's a useful unit it's not very strong but it's a useful unit um, let's go to the bat. The bat, I would say, is useful too. I mean, yeah. The the bat... No, no, no. The bat could have been a bullfrog. It, it costs four. It's a 2-1 flyer. Flyer is not really appreciated in this channel. I don't like flyer that much. So, I would say it, it could have been a bullfrog. It's, it's a unit that has stats that show... Uh, it's costed correctly. It has decent stats, but overall, it's not a unit that... Um, I guess it, it's not gonna carry you it's not uh, even with sigils it's not gonna be completely broken because it costs four bone four bone is a bit too much if you're in a bone deck then it goes higher but otherwise it stays here um i mean you might say that bone decks are easy to get nah, and um, um i mean it's better to play just with blood sacrifices bones you have once in a while bone units in your deck and this is not one you would say ah this is going to be my bone unit of the choice uh, same goes for this, obviously. Now, Beaver. Beaver is trash instantly. Uh, the sigil isn't good. The cost isn't good. The stats aren't good. Yeah, no. This is uh, instant trash. Beehive. Uh, I will say it's trash too. Uh, I mean, the sigil itself, it's uh, decent. I mean, mm, maybe it's useful. Maybe it's... You know, let's bring it. Could have been a bullfrog. It's not useful per se, but it could have been a bullfrog. as a better assessment here. See... So, I mean, this thing becomes insane with the flame. <clears throat> it's one thing to say that this is good with flame or this is good with flame. And it's another thing. Th this thing, when it's got like two health on flame, which most of the time you don't want health, it already becomes strong. So, uh, this overall is a... It, it could have been a bull. <laughs> I mean, it's C. It's not insane, but it's nice. And it also creates some bees, which are nice. So... I mean, here are the bees. They're gonna go to not really a card because they're not really a card. Uh, obviously, if they were a card, they would be somewhere around here because the zero cost one one flyer. And if you give anything to it, I mean, it could have been here or here. It doesn't really matter. This is not a card, so we go on. Uh, we go off to the black goat. By the way, this is gonna be a, bu a bunch of back and forth. So we go to the black goat, which is obviously a very strong unit. Um, you you might say Yosef, you said if it's in your if it's in your deck you want to draw it and play it so this is actually a very strong unit in my opinion it might get to carry potential might I say but uh, maybe maybe it is carry potential no it's not carry potential but it's a very strong unit it's on its own activates a bunch of decks so if you have it in your starting hand you always have a squirrel in your starting hand by the way so if this is also in your starting hand then you can literally play anything that costs two and higher for turn one and even units that cost three so this is really good. Bloodhound is trash, in my opinion. <laughs> now, people would say it could have been a bullfrog. Uh, I don't know, man. Two cost, two, three. Mm, uh, I really want some good two costs. If it's a two cost, it should be good. This is not a good unit. It's trash, in my opinion. Bullfrog is obviously trash. What did you think? That the bullfrog is could have been a bullfrog? <laughs> no. <laughs> bullfrog is trash. Let's go with Cage Wolf is not a deck. Um, not a, um, uh, not really a card. Cat is could have been a bullfrog. To be honest, uh, you could say it's useful because infinite sacrifices... Well, I played enough to actually realize that infinite sacrifices is not really that important, especially with when it's a zero-cost unit. I mean, theoretically speaking, you could turn one play a bunch of cards. By When I say a bunch of cards, I mean two cards, because you start with a squirrel and three cards. And if this is in your hand, then you play the squirrel, sacrifice the squirrel, play the cat, sacrifice the cat twice for the other two units, which I hope is our... Uh, one blood units otherwise it doesn't even work and then you have a zero one which does nothing so this is pretty much a trap like it's a it's a, a new player trap or something it's it's a decent card though now on dead cat which comes with a cat would obviously be somewhere around here because it's a one cost three six um but i mean 
yeah, it's not, it's not really a card, so it's going down. Uh, Child 13, the active version. Well, the active version isn't really a card, but uh, the non-active version, I think, would be uh, useful. I mean, it is useful. It's a one. It it has the. It, it could have been bullfrog like the cat exactly. But the thing is that if you sacrifice it once, you get a two one. So with only having a child thirteen, you can just. You don't need all f to play all four of your cards in your hand. You can play squirrel into child into whatever else into one thing that costs one, and then you have a two one flyer plus whatever the other thing is. By the way, this guy here has a sigil that child thirteen doesn't normally. Have. Wait, is this? Is this sigil? Normally, card, this this should be flying sigil, not not multi attack. There is a mistake here. So this is a flyer. It's not a multi attack. This would be insane if it would be multi attack. Obviously, it would be like carry. Either way, let's continue. Cockroach is a trash. Everybody knows that. I mean, you would say once again sigil is OP, guys. I don't care about the sigils right now. I care if this thing is in your deck as you see it. Is it good to draw? I mean, no. Is this thing a good sigil carry? not really because what you would want to do is transfer the sigil to something else so it's trash literally you just kill it off to get the sigil out of it uh corpse maggot i would say it could have been a bullfrog now the sigil is obviously op and uh just because it has its own sigil you can actually play it for free so the f the cost is irrelevant so it's just a one two free unit i mean that means it's useful yeah it's as useful it's not it's not even it could have been a bullfrog so it's a uh, b Oyodi, I would say, could have been a bullfrog. I mean, uh, I mean, look at this. It's it's like it's almost a bat, but it's worse. I mean, you could say it's better because I don't appreciate flying. So these two, let let's have them next to each other. You know, let's send these a bit more to the back. And uh, yeah, I think these could have been bullfrogs. The two damage attack coming out of nowhere because it's a bone cost is decent. So I believe uh, it could have been a bullfrog. Now, the Dius is uh, to the flames. <laughs> now, this is weird here. To the flames normally means that the units should be in the flames. And the reason the Dius is good on the flames is... Normally, it would be trash, by the way. And, uh, yeah, I will put the Dius into the flames because of the reason that uh, if you burn this and get it to 3 or 4 attack... Or a two or two or three times health, then uh, it gives the buffs to the bells, and then those bells actually do the thing. They they attack too, so this becomes insane. But uh, wait a minute, doesn't that mean it should be useful? Mm, you know what? Let's bring it in useful. It's not insane, but it's useful because if you play it second turn, uh, like if first turn you pass, second turn you play squirrel, uh, you draw a squirrel, play squirrel, squirrel, and the dios. Then the bells come in, enemies attack the bells, uh, dios attacks them, kills them off, and uh, yeah, overall it's a decent unit. I mean. Uh, it's I don't like it per se. I myself, Sif doesn't like it, but uh, this it's it's not a trash unit. I yeah, it's uh, it's it's useful. It's useful. Let's go with the fawn elk. Uh, I will say it's useful because it's a one one that can uh, transform into a two four, which is decent. I don't like it, but it's useful. Elk I will say is uh, trash. Now you might say no, Sif. No, it, it's trash, guys. It it has the sigil that is completely bad and uh, the two four. Now you might say that elk fawn should also be trash. Yeah, it's not also trash because this is a one cost that is a two four next turn. Theoretically speaking, this should not die first turn because you will place it in the point in a place where it should not die. So this is a one cost two four. So this is useful. This this is trash because of the two cost two four. <laughs> now field mice obviously are uh, carry. Now, you might say, yeah, but itself, if it's in your deck, it doesn't carry you. Yeah, but if you pick it up, you win the run. So, this is a carry card. Like, uh, no questions asked. This is also a rare card. So, um, this is a carry, but for other reasons. When you pick this thing up, you should win the run. Gek is very strong. It's not a carry because on its own, it's not going to carry your run and just be the run. But if you place any sigil on it that makes it strong, then uh, the Gek is actually going to be a strong unit. If you place flames on it, it's even stronger. It's a unit that's very strong on its own and becomes even stronger. By the way, a bunch of people are asking what the Gek does. The Gek does nothing. It's just a zero cost 1-1. One, one. So if you put a sigil on it like this thing, it breaks right away. If you put a sigil on it like this, it breaks right away. If you put anything on it that's decently useful, Useful, it breaks right away becomes overpowered if you give it some power some flame it's overpowered and the thing is if you have it in your deck without any buffs whatsoever it still is a very strong unit it's a zero cost one one which is very strong uh, you can sacrifice it if it's in your starting hand you instantly have two units to sacrifice it's a really good unit the dial um yeah i wanted to see something about i don't remember let's continue now 
Let's go for the Greater Smoke, which by the way is not really a card, but if it was a card, it would be healing very strong, maybe even carry potential. I mean, it would be in carry potential. It's a zero cost, one, three. It's a better gag, but it's not a card, so off you go. Great White goes to useful, I think. Yeah, I would say it's useful. Yeah, you will not always pick it up, but uh, when you pick it up, it's pretty much an uh, insta win. So because of that, it's useful. So you have to think it like this. Am I going to pick this thing up if I don't ha have uh, black gold on the on on my in my deck, or uh, if I don't have uh, sacrifice outlets? No. So it, you could say it's trash, but it's not really because when you pick this up, it's it's a good use card. So I will say it's useful. Now, it's almost always a win if you play this, because it's pretty much immortal. The symbol here I don't like, the swimmers, divers, whatever, but uh, overall the card is really good. So, yeah, it's gonna be in the useful tier. Uh, also, sacrificing it gives you a bad sigil, so though... Uh, once again, it's useful because if you can't play it, then it's actually really good. Uh, Grizzly uh, goes with the same, it's also a useful card. Because if you actually can play it, then it's an easy win. If you draw it and it's in your deck, you want to draw it. That's what I'm trying to say here. If this is in your deck, you want to draw it to play it. Otherwise, you would not choose it. This same does not go to these things. If these if these things, you don't want to choose. Some of them you don't want to choose. And some other things, if you choose them, like the cockroach, you still don't want to draw them. So that's why these are trash and these are not. Because these things, you might not want to draft. You might not want to put in your deck. But when you put them in your deck, most of the time, you actually want to draw them you know so that's why they're useful and this is why the grizzling great white go here um also by the way you don't need to have a black goat in your deck to play these you can also have the black goat item and uh, it's not really that hard to get a black goat item so these cards are not as bad as people think they are kingfish goes instantly to trash i mean you don't want to draft most of the time and uh, if you have it in your deck you don't want to draw it obviously if it has flames and stuff it's good but are, are we cut are you kidding me? You could also sacrifice and it would be good because it's a one cost one one. It doesn't. It's a one cost one one. Like don't don't think about the sigils. It's a one cost one one, and the sigils make the enemy flyer. That's what these sigils do. The the swim sigils, by the way, you have you have to think about them as if it makes the enemy into a flyer, because uh, your unit goes under and then the enemy goes above it, like the flyer does, and then you and this unit is also flying. So it's like okay, I do one damage to you every turn. You cannot block it, but you can do. One, two, three, four, five damage to me every turn, and I won't be able to block it. So the Kingfishers, in my opinion, trash. Let's go to the Long Elk, which is an instant to the flames, because that's what this unit is. You throw it in the flames, and the flames go off. Uh, by the way, when I say the flames go off, I don't know if you guys know the interaction, so I'm going to explain it here. If you throw these units here in the flames, and they die completely, so you try to push your luck as much as possible. One Another thing I have to explain. So the flames are not for everybody, but for a lot of people, if you, I think if you run like five times or lose three or die three times, or I don't know exactly the numbers, but at some point, Leshy, the DM, lets you actually push your luck in the flame mechanic. So... Uh, when you push your luck, you either get the buff again and again and again, or you lose the card itself because you pushed your luck too much and the survivors ate your card away. So these cards, when the survivors eat your card, then your card actually uh, dies. You lose the card, but the survivors also die. So for the rest of the run, you can just spam the flame without being any push your luck mechanic involved. You just get instantly max upgrade. You can five times buff health or four times buff damage or whatever. So these cards are just, you pick them up, you throw them in the flames. That's their use. Uh, magpie is uh, trash i mean it is a tra you know what no it's not trash it's uh it's it's could have been a no yeah it's could have been a bullfrog i mean if you draw it it's it's a bit too expensive for the stats but you draw whatever you want out of it so it's good with that aspect but it's a one one flyer for two so it's not trash because if you have it in your deck, you, you're you not going to be like, oh no, I drew the trash magpie. You, you will use the magpie. You can draw another card out of it. So this is useful, but because it has two sacrifices, that's a problem. Two sacrifices, one, one, and also flyer. So that means it's going to do one damage and most likely next turn die. So I'm going to be with a good, could have been a bullfrog. See here. Once again, we're not actually uh, caring about the sigils because the sigils can be sacrificed. The idea is, do you want to draw this in your fight? Um, the sigils is going to be a different video and you can then um, uh, use that according. See, this is uh, obviously a carry here. It's a one mana three damage instantly on everybody and most likely insta win next round too. So this is definitely a carry with any buff whatsoever. This instantly beats you every single fight. The Mantis is a useful unit uh, because it has a good sigil and it's also one mana two, two instantly attacking. Very nice. I mean, it's a one, one. It's a two, one. I meant it does two damage each turn. That's what I'm trying to say. 
Uh, Mole Man is useful too because it buys you a bunch of time. I mean, six um, six health is a lot, and if you give him any flames whatsoever, he, he becomes instantly insane. It's a one mana zero six that buys you a bunch of time, and you have to think about this like a sacrifice outlet. So you play the squirrel, you play the Mole Man. And then you have to think as if you still have a squirrel on the board. You lost the life for this. You lost a card for this. But it's as if you lost the card for blocking power. This thing is going to block. You, you should not sacrifice this by letting it die. You should uh, let it go down to five, two health or one health. And then sacrifice it to play something else in its place. That's how you should use this card. Mole is pretty much trash because it can't even block flyers. And... Um, it's the worst unit on the Mole Man. There is a high chance that it will actually die instantly. It will give you 4 health, but uh, I mean... Nah. Moosebug is trash in my opinion. Um, it's it's not a card that... I, I don't like this card. It's a 3 cost, 3 damage attack, 3 attack unit. It moves all your cards around. You can't control the field. I, I don't like Moosebug at all. It's my opinion. It's my deck. Uh, that's what I'm going to go with it. Strange Larva goes over to a carry, obviously, because this thing is super broken. Uh, these things are not cards. Now, these things are what the larva evolves to. And as you see, it's like a 0-3, which does nothing. And then it's a 7-3 flyer, which instantly wins you the fight. So, obviously, this thing would be like... Uh, it could have been up here, but it's it would also be here. So, let's go on. Opossum, I would say, is could have been a bullfrog. Because it only costs 2. So, it's easy to play even outside of a bone deck. And it could give you a boost on sacrificing stuff. But it's not useful per se. It's just an opossum. It's it's decent. I mean, you can use it. I like these cards. You can use them. <laughs> Let's go with Ouroboros. I would say Ouroboros is over here at the very top of the top. For anybody that doesn't know how Ouroboros works, how he works is that at the start of the... Not at the start. When he dies, he gets a permanent plus one, plus one buff on his attack and his health. And uh, forever. When I say permanent and forever, I mean literally forever. Until until you beat the game and press uh, escape and restart the game into another act or something or whatever, this thing will forever have plus one, plus one attack. So the next time when you die or win, and then the next time you play again, Uroboros is going to be a 3-3. Three, three. When it dies like five times, it's going to be an 8-8 eight, eight for the rest of all your runs. And then when you transfer from Act 1 to Act 2, then um, you're gonna have still an 8-8 eight, eight Ouroboros. Then if it dies at Act 2 another 20 times, it's gonna be a 28. And then on Act 3, if you find it again, it's gonna be an Urobot or something. Then it's still gonna be a 28. So this card is literally the best card in the game. This can one-shot everything. This is like death card level. You don't even need to power it that much up. If you if this thing dies 8 times and is a 9 times 9 9, then it's an instant win every time because 9 damage is enough to always win no matter what's happening. As uh, if you're at minus 5, you already lose and at minus 4, you attack with Roboros 9 9 and then you instantly win. This this is like an insane card. It's obviously broken. So we're going to bring it on its own. Uh Pack Rat is in uh useful because I don't like the card per se, but it is a useful card because it gives you an item and items are broken. So you just, uh, it's useful, it's useful. Let's go with not a card, not a card, not a card. Let's, uh, by the way, if you would choose them where they are, I would say that this is here. This is useful. This is uh, here and this is here. That's my opinion, but uh, you, it's it's on you to decide. What do you think? The reason being is because I think that rares um, are good, useful, but they might not be broken. Wolf Pelts, which were not very strong, are actually very strong because you can get instantly something with a sigil. If you don't know, Wolf Pelts give you sigil units, like units that have a sigil plus its own. And then uh, a Rabbit Pelt, I mean, it's just a card, so it could be anything. Porcupine, I would say, could have been a Bullfrog. Obviously, I mean, it has the stats of a bullfrog, but in my opinion, it has a better ability. The spikes at least can kill something. I mean, this thing just blocks flyers. Who cares, really? I mean, it might save you, but come on. The spikes are a bit more useful overall. You can give it poisonous. I mean, you shouldn't, but you could give it poisonous and then it will one-shot whatever blocks it. You could transfer the spikes to something else. It's, it's overall, I think it's a good unit because you play it first turn, you attack something, and then if something's coming in that is... That has one life like this, this, I mean, this not, but this, this, uh, I don't know, Mantis, um, Elk Fawn, a bunch of stuff will just, just die. They try to attack and die on the spot. And if it's a 1-2, it still dies. Because if, 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 for example, Bullfrog comes in, the Bullfrog attacks the Porcupine, it's a, it becomes a 1-1, one, one, and it becomes a 1-1, one, one, and then on your turn you kill it. So the Porcupine overall is uh, it's better than a Bullfrog. Frog Horn will go to good old Trash. 
It's a two cost, one three. Are you insane? And then it moves around. You can't even make sure that this thing stays in the middle. I mean, you could make sure, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't like the card. It's too expensive for what it does. And most of the time, you don't want to draw it. You just want to sacrifice and be done with it. Um, Rabbit goes on to is not really a card. Now, if it was a card, it would have been trash. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's a squirrel, literally. So I wouldn't be trash. It would be, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not a card. Let's go with Rat King. I would say it could have been a Bullfrog. Um, now four bones is decent. <laughs> be honest, two sacrifices for a two-one, and you get four bones out of it. You know what? I'm gonna say that this thing is trash. You don't want to really draw this thing, even if you're a bone deck. You can't actually have sacrifice outlets that much. So Rat King. I mean, look at this. You, if 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 you're bone deck, let's let's get the th scenarios here. If you're a bone deck, like all your units, almost all your units cost bones. Then this thing is not really playable. You have to have it in your starting hand and uh, draw a squirrel. Because in bone decks, you normally don't draw squirrels. So you have to draw the squirrel and then sacrifice the squirrel to get this out. And then this has to die because you cannot sacrifice to your bone units. And, and then it's useful. Uh, so it's not really that good in a bone deck. Now, in a, in a normal deck that doesn't have bone units, it's trash. And in a deck that has like one or two bone units, those units, most of the time, you can play just by playing normally. So having the sigil is not going to carry you. So it's, it's complete trash. Um, I mean... In the bone in the bone decks that this is useful, you will sacrifice it. You won't even want to draw it. Because two blood is too much. Rattler. Uh, Rattler, I will say, is useful. Now you might say, yo, what are you talking about? You rattler over coyote? Yeah. Uh, like the grizzly and the great white, is that useful tier? For the same reason is the rattler and the useful tier. If you are a bone deck, you should have a bunch of bones and you should be able to play 3-1 very easily. So it's really better than just the coyote being a 2-1. Because you have to think that coyote maybe consumes these four bones to give you a 2-1. And then you can't get anything else. Maybe you could get an opossum out of it. But uh, this thing uh, is actually a payoff card. It's a 6 cost 3-1. It's a payoff card. So it is actually useful on the decks you will pick it. As I said, this thing will not get picked for its sigils. So it's not going to be like the Rat King I wanted, but it, uh, it's a bad card. This thing is only going to be in your deck when you actually want it to be in your deck. You're going to draft this card when you need it. That means that it's useful. Okay, I think I hope I'm, I'm explaining enough why these things are in useful tier. Because um, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people would place them in different tiers. But this thing is not bad when you want to pick it up and when it's in your deck. Okay, that's that's the concept here. If a card is in your deck, is it going to be useful? And this is. If it's in your deck, that means you should be able to play it. Otherwise, you have done a bad draft. If you pick cards that are bad for your deck, then that's a whole other deal, you know? This is not like, okay, Sift said that uh, Grizzly is uh, useful. We pick up Grizzlies. Let's go. No, that's not how this works. Uh, Raven Egg, I will say useful for sure this thing is a one zero two that transforms over by the way let's also have them like the transformations next to each other so this thing is a thing that literally transforms into the two three flyer it's uh, it's good because first of all two flyer is decent damage doing two doing two damage it turns decent and having three life on a two damage flyer is also decent because it will survive a bunch of turns and it will do damage if it dies instantly from a three damage unit like a wolf or something then so be it i guess but it's a useful unit um let's go with raven which uh the raven is the one that this egg hatches and obviously here we go with uh could have been a bullfrog because i mean it's a two cost two three flyer the, the decent stats overall but actually it's useful no forget it it's useful it's decent it's a two cost two three flyer two cost two three not really that much i don't really like the stats but it being a flyer, you can win some fights with it easily because there are some tree fights. You can use it to cheese some stuff. It's it's a useful unit. Ringworm. Ringworm goes into the flame. I mean, that is its purpose for anybody that does know. You throw the ringworm in the flame. If they eat it, you get infinite flames, as I explained earlier. Ring order obviously goes to trash. No doubt in my mind about that. So complete trash over here um snapper river snapper is also trash what are we even talking about at this point skink goes up to i would say useful skink is actually useful because if it uh, gets attacked it goes to the right and then you get two units if the enemy didn't kill the the uh, the, um, the tail because for some reason uh, the enemy has one attack because the tail is a zero two uh, then you can even use the tail to sacrifice it, and uh, then you can sacrifice even the skink alongside it to bring Grizzly in if you had to run another squirrel or something. So overall, it's a useful unit. It's uh, it's pretty decent. It doesn't die easily. The stats are not insane, but it's like one cost, so who cares? And um, yeah, I think I think it's a useful unit. I think it's a useful unit. Skunk now is a trash. We're not even talking about it. 
Um, the smoke, I mean, it's not a card, but if it was a card, it would be would have been a bullfrog because the ability is good, but it itself isn't. Actually, no, it would be useful. Either way, it's not a card, so it doesn't really matter. Let's go here. Sparrow, I would say, is trash. <laughs> It's a one cost, one two flyer. I mean, you would say, yo, sift flying, etc., etc. No, I, I think flying is not that strong. Now, if you ask me why the Raven is here and the Sparrow is here, because the Raven does two attacks so, and has three health. So if you comp use two units to summon it, then at least it will do two damage and then it will also most likely survive. This thing might survive because it has two life. Most of the time it won't. Um, but it only does one damage. So eh, it isn't even killing anything. It's not good. It's not good. So, now we go with the tentacle cards, which would be... This is the ding card. The ding card, in my opinion, is uh, here. Definitely useful. Actually, wait a minute. Yeah, no, okay. Now, it's a def it's definitely a very strong. <laughs> uh, I mean, if Amalgam is a very strong, then this is also very strong for sure. What this thing does is um, f it gets as much attack as far it is from the ding. Actually, no. It gets four attack minus how far it is from the ding so if it's at the very left spot it has four attack second spot three attack next spot two attack last spot one attack uh, obviously you should just play it always in the first spot so it's a four three for two cost which is insane by the way and uh, if you play it in the second spot it's a three three four two so it's oh, still decent so i think it's a very strong unit in my opinion if you give it any buff whatsoever it should instantly beat you the game you cannot flame it for damage though which is bad but i mean you could give it anything else on a flame and it should be good. It's good even with flyers. So I think it's a good card. Uh, let's go with this one, Max Hand. This thing has as much damage as hard cards you have in your hand. This is obviously also very strong. The reason being is it's a one cost. So you uh, in, in the start of the game, at the very start of the game, you, so you start with four cards. One is a squirrel and the other three are, card are cards from your deck. So if you play this thing... Uh, right away, it should be a 2-1 because the, you play the squirrel, you play this thing, so, so you should have two cards in hand. So it's a 1 cost 2-1 in the beginning. And the next turn, if you don't do anything, it's a 3-1 and instantly wins you the fight if the enemy didn't do any damage to you. Uh, you can also break stuff from bottles, from items to instantly give it damage without even playing the card itself. So you just draw the card and instantly get damage out of it. So this thing is even better with those. And overall, it's a very strong unit. Uh, I mean, you can flame buff it, but it, it is a strong unit. And if you give it any sigil that's useful, then it's instantly killing anything. Now, if you say that your sift sigil, etc., yeah, if it's a good unit. If you draw it later on the run, you might even have five or six cards in hand. You play it and just turn the game around. It's a good unit overall. Now, this thing is trash. Now, why this thing is trash? <laughs> I mean, no, it's it's it could have been a bullfrog. Um, it's a one cost. Whatever the enemy has an attack, three. So that means if the enemy is a three, uh, has three attack, if the enemy is a wolf, it's a one cost, three, three, kills the wolf instantly and then does nothing. It like locks there and it just blocks down the road and does nothing. There is a chance that it survives a two attack hit. I'm, I'm still torn about it being trash and uh, being could have been a bullfrog, but I think it's better than the bullfrog as the bullfrog is a one, two. And this is most of the time at max, it's a one, three. I, I, I mean, at minimum, it's a one, three. The only bad thing with this is that you cannot play turn one. It doesn't really do anything. But um, it's decent. I mean, <laughs> I don't believe this is a good card. But uh, I, I believe it's better than the Bullfrog. So uh, it's going to go up there. Stinkbug is uh, definitely over here at useful. It's a two cost, one two. I mean, let's bring it next to the Amoeba. Let's bring the Amoeba next to it. Uh, the, uh, I will not really uh, redo them. But the Stinkbug, I mean, the Stinkbug has a decent skill, which is actually decent, by the way, and it's a 1-2, so it's just an easy thing to play that also makes the enemies have less attack, so it's decent. The Stoat is obviously useful, too, because it's a 1 cost 1-3. I mean, with one Sigil or whatever, it's becoming really decent. With a Flame or whatever, it's become really decent, and uh, it's a useful card to have. I mean, it attacks right away first turn, and then it most of the time it survives the incoming attack, and then it also kills something, or at least damages something, and then buys you even more turn. It's, it's a decent unit. A stunted wolf obviously is also a useful unit, but this is like above the rest. It's like somewhere around here. It's a one cost two two, so it's instantly doing two damage to the enemy, which is really nice. So this is a really useful unit. I mean, it's not very strong, but it's maybe it is very strong. You know, maybe, maybe it is very strong. It's a one mana two two. Yeah, it's very strong. And uh, yeah, Turkey Vulture, I would say, is definitely useful too, because uh, I mean, if you can play an eight cost somehow, I mean, that's that means it's very strong. 
Yeah, I think it's very strong. But the thing is, you have to have... You ha yeah, then it's gonna go to useful. Because you have to be... You have to be in a... Um... Oh, wait a minute. Then this goes here. <laughs> yeah, this goes here. You cannot really play this thing if you don't are in a bone deck. So, it goes here. Maybe maybe I should transfer some other stuff here too. I will look at it in the end. Rayuli is definitely here. Like, no questions asked. These things are literally the payoff card of the uh, respective deck. So, this thing needs a bunch of... Uh, needs definitely black code in the deck. And needs you to be able to sacrifice stuff. Maybe um, a worthy sacrifice sigil. Like, on a totem. Maybe this sigil here on a totem or something. But uh, Rayuli is like a payoff card. It's trash, otherwise you can't really play it with four cost. It's a bit too hard to play. I mean, if you're playing like a full-on defensive team and trying to stall out the game to play in Rayuli, well, then you get into the category of deck it's good in. So, it's trash. Let's go with Warren. Warren goes over to trash. I mean, it's a one cost, zero, two. That gives you... Um, a, what's this called? A rabbit. It, it gives you this thing. And then you sacrifice that too. It's a blocker. It's You could have so many better things in your deck than this. I don't know. It's good if it gives you like... Uh, if it boosts your summoning. But otherwise I would say it's trash. You could say it could have been a bullfrog. I mean yeah. Let's say it could have been a bullfrog. It's not complete trash. The reason it could have been a bullfrog and not complete trash. Is because you can play the warren for one. Then it dies. Blocks whatever it dies like a hero. And then you play the rabbit alongside with the squirrel. And sacrifice both. It buys you time. Yeah, I guess it buys you time. Wolf Cup goes over to very strong. Um, because it's the one, the only one that transforms into a 3-2. So first turn you do 1 damage. And next turn you should do 3 damage. You should place the Wolf Cup in a lane where nothing is in at the moment. And also nothing is coming up. So that first turn it's going to attack for 1. And then if the next turn something's coming up. It will still transform in time and do 3 damage. And uh, with any sigil whatsoever. And with any flame whatsoever. This thing is instantly a win. So uh, this is a really really good card. That uh, you can build your deck around. And uh, give it a bunch of buffs. And the wolf is definitely in useful. As it's 2 cost 3-2. Three, and 3 damage is really good in this game. You can almost uh, win instantly. I mean most of the time you win next turn. If you have a 3 damage attack going on. If you don't lose that attack next turn. And uh, these units. Everything that has 3 attack. With just one, 1 flame or 2 flames. Or maybe with just even a uh, sigil. Are instantly very very powerful. Now I said... I said in the beginning that uh, it doesn't matter if it's good with if it's good with sigils, but otherwise it's trash. Then it's trash. Um, yeah, obviously, but uh, this thing is also good if it doesn't have any sigil and doesn't have any flame whatsoever. So uh, it's a decent unit. You can easily play this thing. It's not really that hard to do, get two sacrifices with an item or with just another squirrel next turn, and then it gives you a three attack unit, which is a good payoff. So I think it's a decent unit. Now let's go through all the units uh, really quickly here to make sure that everything is nice and dandy. And at that point I will stop. So Roboros is okay here. These three are definitely carries. Once again, the Field Mize is a carry because it's extremely rare. Uh, on its own, it might... On its own, it might have been overhead useful, you know. But, um, I mean, this thing is a carry for other reasons. This thing is a carry because the moment you take this, you try to sacrifice it fast as possible and then you win. So, this is maybe the exception of the rule. Uh, very strong here. Yeah, 2 mana, 3, 3 is decent. I mean, yeah, 2 mana, 3, 3 is decent. 2 mana, 4, 3 is good. 1 mana, care. Okay. Yep, yep. I think this very strong units are here, obviously. Once again, Black Goat is literally enabling a bunch of uh, turn 1 kills and a bunch of very powerful plays. Gek is also really useful with uh, anything you give it, even with without giving it sigils. If you give it a sigil, for example, the Mantis God, boom, instantly super powerful. So Gek is really good. Gek, Geek. Gek, Geek, Gek, Geek. Um, Stunted Wolf and Wolf Cub, I mean, those are DPS gods. Now over here, I think the Ant Queen, yeah, I mean... I don't need to reorder them. Let's reorder the things that actually need the deck to work in the very back. Just so that people understand what I'm saying when I'm saying it. Deck that, yeah, only these things need deck to work. The rest are pretty much useful cards. I mean, the Ant Queen, yeah, everything's decent here. Mm, the Dius, to be honest, the Dius should have been here. Because without Flames, I don't think it's really that good. But I think it's a useful card on its own. I mean, first turn you can pass, and then second turn you play the Dius, yeah, yeah. I think everything's nice here too. Um, yeah, I mean, these two are pretty much almost the same unit. The difference being this is random, this is not. So it could be better, it could be worse. So it stays useful. A Raven Egg is useful. You could say use a Raven Egg is in very strong. Maybe Raven Egg is very strong. Maybe. Because if you give it like a flame or any sigil, it becomes insane. 
Yeah, but the thing is that if you don't give it anything, then it's not that strong. While well, these cards, if you don't give them anything, they still are very strong. So this stays here. These stay here. These stay here. Everything's good. Could have been a bullfrog. Yeah, these cards are like... Yeah, they're not overpowered. They're mediocre. I mean, four bones is too much. It's it's too much. If you start, if you're in a bone deck, then okay, I guess. If you have the bone lord boon of getting eight, but to get the bone lord boon of getting eight, okay. By the way, let me explain something. There is a bone lord. There is a, an event that lets you sacrifice a unit. It's the bone lord event, and if you sacrifice uh, any unit other than uh, the pelts, you get one bone for every fight you fight. So at the start of every fight, from there on out, you will have one bone. And you can find this event, I think, two times, maybe three, but I have only found it two at most. So you can only have up to two starting bones in this game. Now, if you sacrifice the very strong black goat, it gives you eight bones at the start of each fight after you sacrifice the black goat. Okay, uh, obviously, if you then the run ends, the buff does not stay. So this is a run exclusive thing. Um, yeah, if you sacrifice the very strong black goat, then these things become obviously better. You know, you can start right away playing a coyote two damage right away, a bat two damage right away. But you have to realize that these things on their own are not really that good. You have to everything to align, and they're also not down here because if if if, if they weren't here, they would be down here. They wouldn't be higher. So, I mean. They are good on their own, too. They're not complete trash, but if it's like the one bone unit you have in your deck, then uh, you can use it. Yeah, those are good. Everything's good. Opossum is also decent um, with, the same, with the same reasoning. If you don't have any other unit, then it's decent. Otherwise, I would say it's pretty much over here at trash territory. But because it's cheap and because most of the time you should have the, st uh, the stink bug in your deck, if you don't play the draft mode that I play, then this should be in the deck. So, theoretically speaking, you should play Stink Bug and Opossum, and then you should not have that many bones left over. If you play a turn where you have somehow six bones, it means you lost six units, which means the run is already, the fight is already going mediocre, and then you think the bat is gonna save you? So, yeah. <laughs> You have to realize that some things to align, something is happening. For, for you to get four bones, you have left, lost four units. So, and do you want to play Coyote or do you want to play Stink Bug? I think you want to play Stink Bug, not a Coyote. Especially because the Stink Bug also only costs two bones. You understand? Now, let's continue. Yeah, these are correct here. If you don't have the deck that can handle them, then they're trash. And uh, yeah, Alpha is trash still because five cost. Same reasoning why Coyote and stuff's trash. This thing needs not this this thing not only needs five bones, which is expensive, it also needs you to have units on the board. And I mean, think about this. How will you get five bones other than the Bone Lord buff? You will have lost five units. How if you have lost five units, what is this going to do with the plus attack? I guess you can play Squirrel alongside it. Still it's trash, though, in my opinion. Beaver, trash trash. Yeah, th this thing uh, two two mana, two three with a very, very, very bad sigil. Like an enemy comes in and it's YOLO's in and dies. I hate it. A trash, this is trash, 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 trash. I mean, this could have been could have been a bullfrog, but I still don't believe it's trash. There are so many better things. There are so many better things. Now you would say, would you pick an elk? Uh, would you pick a porcupine above an elk? Yes. <laughs> so it's trash. These are trash. This is trash. This makes the enemy a flyer, by the way. What happened? Where did it go? Oh, here it went. This thing makes the enemy a flyer, and you have a 1-1 one -one to compensate for it. Insane power level. Yeah, proc horn, maybe somebody will disagree. This thing, maybe somebody will disagree. Now you would say, yo, bring this over here. No, 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 no. If you have the sacrifice deck, if you have a bunch of blood deck, you want Urayuli and these things. <laughs> you don't want the moose bug. Yeah, I think everything seems fine. These are not cards. Yeah, that's uh, that's it pretty much with the overview. you. And uh, I think uh, with a recap, I guess. And I think that's going to be it. Can I make everything a bit smaller just so that everything is in one screen? Yeah, for everybody that wants to have everything in one screen, here it is. So, yeah, I think we're gonna end this here. I hope you guys agree or disagree or whatever. I'm really keen to hearing your opinions on this because my opinions are definitely different than others. As I said, I will do another one of these for sigils only. So, I guess look out for that. The, it will be a lot different because, you know, these things here at the bottom are trash, but... Um, in the sigils unit, they will be higher in the sigils thing. So, anyway, uh, as I said, uh, if you like the video, maybe drop a like. If you disagreed, I don't know, drop a like to help me out. <laughs> if you disagree, then just comment down below and tell me at what you disagree at. Although I'm pretty sure that um, I will disagree you with you disagreeing. But to be honest, I might be wrong about some stuff. You could educate me. I'm very welcome to hear opinions about why the bullfrog is actually could have been a bullfrog instead of being trash. 
And um, actually, let me bring these patrons here a bit higher so that everything's visible. The names. Ah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Either way, that's going to be it for today. Uh, I hope you guys liked the content. And um, yeah, as I said, opinions on everything that I said are very, very welcome. I, it will take me some days to read them, though, because a bunch of comments are coming in all the time. But uh, still, uh, yeah, that's it. Hope you guys disagree. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a bit of... Um, a different tier list that people thought it would be but uh, that is what it looks like and if you guys are watching my videos you uh, then you then i'm pretty sure you agree with why everything is where it is because most of these things are also things that i say in the run and uh, yeah also if somebody was doing the drinking game if i say trash you actually have to drink well um um i hope the i hope you live in a country where you don't have to play for hospitals because you know yeah <laughs> either way that's going to be it for today so Thanks for watching, everybody, and see you guys around.